the Corrections Director, uh, Joe Carvalito, on this morning. Good morning, Joe. Morning, Chris. Morning, Sabrina. Good morning. Uh, was it cool to run into uh, the former director there in the Zoom room? Yes. Yeah. Very nice to see him again. It's been a while. <laughs> he looks like he's doing pretty good. Yeah. Stress free. Yeah. Stress free. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, here you he are. Handed it all over to me. <laughs> all the stress is now on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frank. <laughs> and you've been through a lot. Yeah. My God. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely, definitely, I agree. <laughs> well, you're still standing, though, Joe. Uh, the standing. Um, what about in, right? But, in there. but we're we're seeing that you guys are taking a big budget cut here. Two, the two point seven million dollar budget cut for Department of Corrections. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. I have like two point six eight four to be specific. Um, you know, uh, every every year. Right, we go through this budget uh, request, and uh, it will be optimal, of course, to get what you asked for. Right, mm. it will be the optimal uh, uh, thing to to receive as far as you know what what your needs are when you request for your budget. But um, you know, um, granted the situation that the whole government is right now, you know, the pandemic. You know, Actually, the whole world or the United States, you know, based on this uh, pandemic that we're all facing, uh, it's understood, you know, that, uh, and we anticipated that we were going to get some kind of cut, um, to be honest with you. Uh, we know that the revenue stream is, you know, uh, not coming in as, as, as uh, it was supposed to come in, uh, like every year, you know, pre-pandemic, right? So um, we just have to... Uh, manage and do what we can with, within our means to to uh, absorb that cut that we're getting. Uh, previous to that, we, we received uh, more than what we, we uh, ha uh, requested for uh, in previous fiscal year. So, you know, then, then the other agencies, the other law enforcement agencies, so they have to deal with it. Uh, so we're we're going to try to deal with it and uh, work within our means. Um, it's really not gonna impact uh, as much as uh, I know uh, 2.6 million is, is a lot of money, right? If you really look at it, uh, but uh, it's workable for us. Uh, and I think we can we can uh, live with this uh, budget uh, as long as we, we manage it uh, accordingly. Uh, we're gonna be able to fund all the our FTEs uh, which is warm bodies, okay? And that's the that's always the bulk of the, the budget, right? Is personnel costs. Um, learned that in uh, management 101, right? That's the bulk of where the, the, the funding goes to. Um, so we're gonna be able to do that as far as funding all the, the warm bodies. And that's the good thing about it. Um, our big biggest um, uh, contracts are the, of course, the food services um, and um, the GMH contract, right? So those are like, uh, two and a half to three million dollars every year, right? That we have to pay for for those uh, contracts, uh, and of course, that's really you know one of the biggest needs you know to continue to uh, run our operations so um this year and even the past fiscal year uh, 21 uh our Guam Memorial hospital uh, uh, cooperative agreement uh, was paid for by our department of interior uh, grant yeah. so it's the same this year and that's another two and a half million two and a half to uh, uh, to fund that uh, agreement. So I think we're okay because we funded all of our, our uh, warm bodies and we can work within our means. The, the overtime issue is, you know, of course big also. You know, we always have to uh, try to manage that a little bit better. You know, every, you know, for the past decade that I've seen, you know, since I've been here and I've been viewing a lot of the 
and documents, right? Uh, because we've been trying to address that issue. But for the past decade, that's been the biggest issue here, you know, and it continues to be the issue. Uh, why? I always, when I came in here, I, I'm, I, I take this from my GP uh, experience, right, as a manager. Uh, over time, it's just a symptom of the actual problem, right? The actual problem is manpower, right? Sizing the agency, right? So if you don't right size the agency, you're going to continue to incur overtime. And it's in law enforcement, that's, that's a given, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. So there's nothing you can do to stop overtime uh, in its entirety. You can slow it down and manage it a lot better, right, as a, as a good manager. But uh, right sizing is the first and foremost thing that you need to do to, to uh, address that issue. And we're trying to do that right now as we speak. I've been, I've been working with my deputy and my uh, managers here right, to uh, come up with a, a really good management, overtime management plan. Uh, we're looking at all the scheduling options, right, to work uh, um, to minimize as much as possible uh, our, our manning requirements, you know, and, and without, of course, uh, jeopardizing any safety and security issues, right? Um, it's been out there, right, that the, the ratio between inmates and, you know, detainees to, to guards, right, is outrageous, right? But, uh, and then if you really look at the, the structure here, right, how the design is in this prison, it, it's, it's all separated, it's far apart. So it's not like it's one building where you, you go from the bottom up, right? And it's easier to, to manage with uh, personnel, right? You can have one guard, you know, to maybe 40 uh, inmates or, you know, and it's easier to manage if, if, if it's more consolidated. But just the design itself kind of like makes the manning requirement a lot more uh, challenging, so to speak, because of the security issues that you have to deal with. How, how fast can you get from one end to the other, right? As a backup, if a backup is needed, you know, from one post to the other. And that's why you need like, you know, so many people to man a certain post. For example, the, the maximum security that we have here, that's the post that we have to man the most. We have to put and prioritize more personnel there, right? So, that's the challenge, but I think for our budget this year, and I keep talking away here, I guess it's just because, you know, um, um, I'm faced with all those <laughs> issues, right? So um, I'm, I'm trying to um, work within our, our means here, and I think our, our, our staff here understand our challenges, and I have a great uh, management staff here, and I think they're all on board and uh, hopefully um, we'll get through this. Uh, the pandemic, I guess, caused a lot of, uh, you know, uh, issues as far as, the, you know, the impact, the financial impacts that, that we're, you know, getting right now in Guam, and it's no different in the United States, like I said before. So we're just gonna have to uh, tighten our belts and, and try to move on with what we have and deal with it. So you're you're good with the two point six million dollar cut for next fiscal year. You're going to be able to deal with it. We'll, we'll be able to deal with it, and um, uh, of course, um, it's going to put some constraints, right? And and what we really want to do moving forward, like continuous recruit recruitment, right? It's going to kind of like s uh, slow down our recruitment uh, um, goal as as far as uh, where I want to be. You know, as with the manning requirement, um, we're at 200. Uh, we, we've recruited 62 uh, uh, recruits, but the issue, the other issue, on the other side of that, is the retention. It's hard to retain our officers once we recruit them, right? So we recruited 62. We uh, actually um, re-employed. 
three, three more. So that's total 65, but we lost uh, another 50 to resignations, retirement, uh, transfers, you know. So um, we're kind of like back to square one, <laughs> even though the, the, <laughs> the we've been doing everything we can to recruit, but like I said, there's another side to it, right? It's the retention. What what do we have to offer here in the Department of Corrections, right? That the other law enforcement agencies, locally and federally, uh, have to offer, right? I really don't have much to offer. We have we, we, the pay disparity is one, right? Way to make a pitch. Yeah. <laughs> right? Our officers, yeah. Our officers are one of the lowest paid out of the local law enforcement agencies that we have, right? Um, it's hard to pay them because not only is the pay a big disparity, you walk in here and you start working in this type of environment, you're gonna have second, uh, <laughs> you know, um, third dog. You're gonna have second. Dog. Yeah, you you have to be in here. To, to know and understand what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. you know, the front lines here to understand what I'm talking about and what they have to deal with. That's why we, we when we recruit, it's hard to retain them. So what do you what do you tell these officers, Joe? Hey man, don't leave. You know what do you what do you say to them <laughs> to keep them there? I, you know what, the governor. I've had this discussion already uh, with with the governor, especially when I came on board, right? And the governor fully understands the, the situation as far as the recruitment and retention issue. Um, she is on board 100%. She supports rec uh, us recruiting and she's been uh, um, supporting all the recruitments that we've had so far. But I've, I've made it known that retaining is the other side of it, the other problem. So she's in support of that too. So what, what she came up with during our public safety uh, meetings was uh, as an, uh, an incentive pay. It's called the correctional uh, differential pay. It's a 25% uh, on top of your base pay, 25% more of the uh, pay uh, on top of your base pay. This has already been uh, proposed to the Department of uh, Administration and we've submitted all the documents to try to uh, get this implemented. Uh, so we're waiting to see where that goes uh, in hopes that that would be an incentive paid to compete with the market out there, you know, with, with all the other law enforcement agencies and federal agencies, military, you name it. We lose them to, every, to just about all these other agencies. Right. Joe, but if, if your budget is getting cut by 2.6 million, are you, if this 25% correctional Differential incentive pay, incentive pay, incentive pay goes into effect. Will you have the budget to pay it out? Well, not. We, we didn't approve. Uh, we did not approve. I mean, um, ask request for it in our budget, right? Because it's something that was under discussion, right? So we we never had the the opportunity to really put it into our budget, but the the plan is already there. The the policy, the you know, the DOA circular is already there. We just didn't uh, get it uh, going uh, uh, as soon as we, we actually could uh, based on the budget cycle. So no, it wasn't implemented or it wasn't uh, a part of our fiscal year budget for the chair. So that is that something that um, if you guys uh, get approval that you plan on uh, going in for, I don't know, making a supplemental budget request or something like that? How much is it going to cost? Um, Estimated. For, for a whole year, I, I think we were looking at a, a 2.7 million for uh, additional for, for a fiscal year. Uh, based on our uh, uh, correctional officers that we have on board, remember? Mm -hmm. Correctional officers. 
Um, again, have you heard anything back though from um, DOA? Um, it's it's under discussion, and uh, I've yet to uh, discuss it further with the governor. Uh, you know, there 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 are other funding sources, you know, that, that are available out there that I uh, I'm sure the governor can can uh, um, within our transfer authority can can uh, uh, probably uh, uh, look at as an option and. Uh, I hope that we can do this sooner than later. But uh, again, uh, it's in motion, right? Everything is in motion right now. And uh, it's just a matter of finding the funding source for it, whether it's uh, this year or next year. I'm hoping this year. Hmm. The faster we get this going, the better off we are as far as, you know, uh, saving. This, this is like, um, uh, future savings, so to speak, right? Because it, it, it's going to tackle the, the overtime issue, mm. right? The cost for overtime is enormous. Um, we're tracking, you know, uh, every year we go in and we, we ask, uh, and we, we present our budget. We tell them that this is what we incur in overtime, three million at least. But yet we we get appropriated nine hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand for our, our budget uh, when we when we uh, get our uh, our budget uh, approved for for the year after that. So it, it's been a big uh, tasking to uh, continuously uh, deal with this uh, overtime, and we're trying our best to to. Uh, mitigate that uh, by doing our, our homework, our research. We've looked into the National Institute of Corrections uh, manning analysis, right? And as far as how to do, uh, come up with best practices. On, and one of the things is all the options, the different options in scheduling, right? Because we know already that our challenge here is uh, the the design of this prison. It's not like the other prisons in, in the states that you see, right? They, a lot of states now, they have a state-of-the-art uh, prisons, right? Or detention facilities. They're all in one. Here, we have one down in Agatha for detention. And we have a, the main facility up here in Manila for, you know, uh, in two different locations, you know? But in the states, if you really look at it, it's, it's all in one. You have a detention facility plus a, a prison, you know, it's all in one. And it makes it more uh, efficient when you, when you have something like that at state of the art and, and as far as design is concerned. So just so we're clear, you put in this request for uh, this 20-25% uh, differential pay. And I'm looking at this in October of last year, the start of the new fiscal year. Uh, DOA said, "Oh, good to go. We should we should do this. We should give this incentive pay to DOC officers so that we can retain them." And then last uh, this month, just last week, I want to say the BBMR said, "Oh, no, nah, we can't do it. There's no money." Is this where we're at? That's correct. We don't have the money to implement it right now. But the governor can use a transfer authority. Is that what you said? I thought I heard you say that the governor could use her transfer authority. Well, remember, uh, we fall under the executive branch, right? And the governor does have, uh, you know, oversight over all the law enforcement agencies. So. Uh, for example, you know, uh, whatever um, other funding sources out there that are available to her, she can, you know, based on her authority to, to transfer monies around in, uh, in the executive branch, she, she, she may be able to, to uh, have that as an option. I'm not going to step over my bounds as far as, you know, uh, what she can and can't do, right, because that's... Uh, that will be ultimately her, her call. Uh, 
Uh, I've already, like I said, I've had discussions and I'm going to continue to have discussions with uh, the governor on it. And uh, I'm hoping that, you know, they'll somehow, uh, maybe even with the help of the legislature, you know, uh, during our upcoming uh, budget uh, hearing, uh, we can all get together and, and uh, find uh, different uh, ways to uh, to try to uh, help help us resolve this long-standing issue with this overtime and uh, retention of our officers is one of the biggest factors because we're going to keep going down this road, the same road that we've been that the OC has been in for the past decade or so. You know, with this overtime issue, and you can't fix that overtime issue until you fix the Manning issue, which is, you know, the biggest, that's the, that's the main problem. Like I said, overtime is just a symptom of that actual problem, you know, and the actual problem has always been the Manning issue here. We, this place has never been right-sized. Thank you, Joe. No, I, I hear you. Yeah. I think we all understand that you guys... <laughs> have uh, been suffering for years, decades, one director after another, uh, this manpower shortage and the issue of retention because a lot of the officers go to better paying jobs. Yep. You know, not have to deal with all the stress that goes on over at the Department of Corrections. So, you know, hopefully you'll get this um, this incentive pay uh, proposal and, and the funding to back it up. Maybe you should get a bullhorn and stand outside Adeloupe and let them know, hey. You don't get the guy in trouble now. <laughs> I mean, how how else are you going to resolve this issue if you can't get people to stay or can't even get people to go to DOC? So good luck. Good luck, Joe. Thank you. Take Thank your you. blood pressure meds. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thank you. Take okay. care, Joe. All right, guys. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, real quick, we're going to wrap the show here with Valerie from uh, Wyndham. Uh, Valerie, thanks for joining us. Good morning. We got a bunch of videos. There was a break in. I want to say over the weekend, uh, Bree. Or um, no, yes, yeah, Sunday was it? Sunday, early Sunday morning, because I think I got that uh, release from Val yesterday. Hi, Val. Hi. Good morning. Can good you hear morning. me? We yes. can hear you. You're coming in clear. Definitely. We have the videos uh, that we're gonna play. Can you tell us anything more about the uh, break in? So it actually happened yesterday, Monday morning.